What does blue on blue make? We're going to investigate this question by making a solution of a food dye, a blue food dye, and I just have a, an Erlenmeyer container filled with about 1,400 mil milliliters of water. I'm going to put about 10 drops of the blue food dye in. Give it a swirl, and I have a homogeneous solution. Now, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to pour some of the liquid into each of beakers A and B, roughly 200 milliliters. All right, now, it makes a lot of sense that no matter what the concentration of the solution is, that since I'm pouring it from the large Erlenmeyer into the smaller beakers, it's still the same solution. The concentration, the appearance of the solution, as far as color, I'm going to pour just a little out, as far as color or intensity shouldn't change. So we've got roughly 200 milliliters of a blue food coloring solution in each of the beakers A and B. Now, for our audience, I've asked them to participate. I have one particular participant who I'm going to ask questions to, and I'm going to ask everyone to answer the questions on a note card. I've found that when I ask my students if they understand something, they tell me they do, and they really don't. And I need to make them commit themselves. And even if I ask them to commit themselves in their head, oh, as soon as they see it, they change their mind. So to make sure that they have decided what they expect to see, I make them write it down. So this is your first question. I'm going to take this beaker and I'm going to pour some of this solution into beaker A, roughly half. And I want you to write on your cards, what are you going to see? How will this appear? Now, one of our participants is looking straight on, and all the other participants, you're going to be looking at your video cameras, the video screens here. And I want you to tell me, what do you think you're going to see? So let's write that down. And at this point, we're going to take beaker B, pour half in. Everyone's got their answers. They've committed themselves. You should be committed, but... We won't do that yet. All right. I've removed roughly half. Now, I'm going to ask you, when you look at the two solutions in beakers A and B, how do they appear to you? A and B appear to be the same color. There's they appear to be A. the same. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. She's viewing the beakers from a horizontal position. And she's looking through the beaker that has a certain diameter. The beakers are identical. So the diameter of the beakers would be the same. And the appearance of the solutions there appear to be the same. Is that what you wrote on your note cards as far as what you would see on the video monitors? In other words, what you would see if you are looking from a vertical position. You know, in a lot of cases, when we make a solution, we think that its concentration is going to be the main factor in how that solution appears to us. But there are other things we want to consider, and that would be the path that the light is going to take through our sample. Now, looking horizontally, the path link is, length is going to be the same. But when the light is being passed down the solution in a vertical way, as you would see it on the video screens, do the two solutions appear to be the same color? Not at all. The light is passing through fewer molecules of blue dye in beaker B. And so this appears to have a lighter appearance. Here, many more molecules, and so a darker appearance in beaker A. Is that what we would have predicted? In most cases, my students are going to say that it appears the same because you're adding two solutions to one another. It's the same starting concentration. So 
wouldn't they appear to be the same? Think about this. We talk about in chemistry whether something is additive. I have my students look at chemical equations and sometimes they want the coefficients on both sides to be the same. But that may not be the case if the particles are breaking up. What if I take solutions of equal concentration? What if I mix one molar hydrochloric acid with one molar hydrochloric acid? What am I going to get? One molar hydrochloric acid? Some students might think two molar hydrochloric acid if you're going to add the numbers. So here the solutions have a very different appearance depending on the perspective that you're viewing them. We can take this now, pour it right back to where we have roughly the same amounts of liquid in both of the containers. Not quite there. And the two colors should appear the same both from a horizontal and a vertical position. Okay, I have another question for you. You're going to write your answer on your note card. I'm going to take, this is a beaker of water, and I'm going to take this beaker of water and I'm going to add water to beaker B. Okay? What is going to happen? What are you going to see? What will you see, viewing it horizontally, what will you see if you're viewing it on the overhead screens from a vertical position, that position of the overhead camera? Got your answers? Here we go. I'm going to double the concentration here. Not double the concentration, double the amount of the liquid. <clears throat> All right, from a horizontal position. B might be a little lighter, but they look pretty close to the same. Okay. It makes sense that B would be slightly lighter because I have done a dilution. And so we have more space between the molecules. If I get my uh, colored mm -hmm. shirt out of the mm -hmm. way, how's that? That helps. That, because you have a better view now. <laughs> yeah. I should have thought of that. So B does appear lighter because it is a dilution. Fewer molecules in a certain, in the volume that's now there. How does the solution appear to you? When you're looking from a vertical position, the color of the two solutions should appear the same. Now, let's ex try to explain this phenomena. Well, here we have the molecules crowded together, and here we have the dilution. So when you're looking through horizontally, there's more space between the molecules. This should appear to be lighter in beaker B. If you're looking vertically through the solution, then what's going to happen is in beaker B, there's more space between the molecules, so the light is going to hit a solution that's only half as concentrated. But it's got twice the path length. Half as concentrated a solution, but still twice the path length. Those two effects are going to cancel each other out, and the two solutions should appear to be the same color. What this means is that not only concentration is going to affect the appearance of a solution, but the depth of our solution is going to be a factor we want to consider. Now, how can we relate this to chemistry? Think about spectroscopy using a SPECT20 or a colorimeter. You're asked to use identically matched cuvettes. They need to be similar in size and shape. Any irregularities in them could affect their path length and how the solutions appear. Um, how you set the cuvettes into the colorimeter is going to also, could also affect the path length. So spectroscopy is one way that we can relate these color um, ideas to our classes. I want to ask you to make one more prediction. I have three different containers, two beakers and a graduated cylinder, and I'm going to put 100 milliliters of the same solution into each of the containers. All right, here's our first 100 milliliters. And I want you to, again, predict what you think you're going to see. That's into the larger beaker. Into the 150 milliliter beaker. 
and last. Roughly 100 milliliters into three different containers, and yet, while they may appear the same to someone viewing them on the horizontal level, they're going to have a very different appearance if you look at them vertically. I think it's important then that we think about this when we do things like microscale chemistry, and we can relate this to common everyday experiences. Think about the ocean water, all the same concentration, but how does it appear as you move away from the shore and go into deeper waters? Putting this into the chemistry classroom, looking at spectroscopy and how light is, is going to appear different as it moves through different solutions, it's going to be very important.